You know, sometimes you feel like an absolute legend. You put together a massive sale with a new customer. Um, you reach out to someone who's high profile and you get a response. And then other days you just feel like a complete noob and wonder how on earth you're still in business. I just had a week like that. One mistake after the next, and it seemed like nothing was going my way. Um, we took on two jobs. One of them was a repeat, and one of them was with a new customer. The repeat job is a textile job we do twice a year, every year, but we haven't done it with our automatic press yet. And, you know, the customer warned me. They said, you know what, why don't you go ahead and deliver a sample? Let us see it before you commit to it. And verbatim, I sent this text out, I wouldn't deliver 900 pieces of trash. Trust me. Famous last words. What did I do? I delivered 900 pieces where the print was two inches too high and ended up sewing under where the drawstring coverage should be. That was $2.50 wholesale per yard worth of fabric. So per linear yard, 50 inch wide roll. $2.50. It retails for $7.50. So that was that was well over a thousand dollar mistake plus palletized shipping that I had to eat. Um, a little bit later on in the week we took on a textile designer that offers water-based prints on napkins. Fantastic design, home-based business, but they do a lot of volume. And I told the customer that we don't do water-based ink, but I'm willing to try it out pulled in water-based emulsion and uh, a, a full coverage high opacity water-based ink and everything looked good. The sample came out looking all right. The only thing I noticed was we weren't getting a lot of coverage. I quoted the job out like we normally would and we started printing only to find out that the emulsion would just wear off the stencil really quickly. We weren't using anything fancy. Um, we, we double baked our screens, we hardened them afterwards with like a 30 minute um, exposure, we tried sun baking them, we did literally everything, and the stencil was just rubbing out of the screens on the automatic press after like 150 passes. Um, we also couldn't do a pass, pass, and pull. We had to do three passes, a flash, three more passes, and we were charging for like a double pass. Um, so what happened was, we ended up taking what should have been like a three and a half hour job, um, and it turned into just a little over 31 hours uh, when it was all said and done. There's really two lessons to be learned here. Don't underestimate your own ability to sabotage yourself. And working harder is not the same or better than working smarter. You know, a 60 hour work week and even though we made money, we ended up literally losing $4,000 worth of business and like out-of-pocket expenses to replace customer garments. Um, the 30 hours that we took on a three-hour job, uh, we ended up we ended up losing because I do with all the communications and sales. I had two jobs that were ready to launch, Vacation Bible School and then uh, another one of our customers that's coming down to a relatively tight deadline. They had to back their order down from a larger number of units to a smaller number of units in order to make sure that we could complete it in time that order will probably get kicked down the road. So it's not a total loss, it's just a delay. But sales that they won't make now at their, their next show are sales that probably won't happen, um, you know, in general. They're not gonna go online and buy these shirts from the people just because they don't have them. And then um, the Lost Vacation Bible School order, that's like $1,300, it's just gone. You know, it's going somewhere else. That's like four months worth of automatic equipment payments right there in one week's worth of mistakes. Um, so what that means is we're just gonna have to work, you know, a multiple harder to get new business, to make up for the loss, and it, it really stinks when you have a week like this. And it's a learning experience too. You know, part of it definitely is pride getting in the way. I've been doing this for 10 years. I can transition into a new piece of equipment, no training necessary. Um, and part of it was just a risk that I took. I figured if I have the opportunity to get paid to learn, water-based, um, why not, you know what I mean? Hey, let's switch over and try it. But it blew up in our face, big time. The emulsion that we used, the PHU emulsion, um, was just not fun to work with. The When I got off the phone with the rep, um, he, he, I, was, I was super frustrated. 
because the guy tried to be like, um, because the, the guy told me, you know, hey, look, you know, your exposure unit is part of the problem. You're gonna have to spend $5,000 to get a functional exposure unit. Um, you need to be using different chemicals. And I get that there's, there's definitely room for improvement, but I mean, come on. I've been using textile PV for several years, zero problems. You can run like 5,000, 10,000 prints without it going bad. And all of a sudden I switch over to this different emulsion and immediately, like the stencil was separating from the mesh of the screen, it wasn't bonding. So, you know, a, a direct prep, obviously that's important, but a $5,000 exposure unit just so that I can expose water-based screens, no way. Like kids are using single point exposure units in college and having no problems with it. So I was a little frustrated that a troubleshooting call got turned into a sales call. Um, but we ended up just like brute forcing it. We switched back to our textile PV because we weren't using discharge uh, additive on the water-based ink, um, which is a whole nother issue. Um, the, the method that the person was using before to print their stuff was, was literally like a hinged manual screen on a tabletop and no off contact, just sloughing ink through with a manual squeegee. When they finished each individual print, they'd pull it off and they'd use um, a, a legitimate clothing iron with a piece of parchment to evaporate and cure their, their um, prints. And switching over to production environment, to get that same thick depositive ink and to close all of the big air gaps in the linen, because I mean, linen is a very loose weave, at least the linen that we were messing with is a very loose weave. And you have to push a lot of ink through to close the air gaps in between all of the fabric. And um, that's why we were doing three passes, a flash and three more passes to fill that in. Um, but it really came down to just us making sure that we were delivering a top quality product rather than just turning out a bunch of trash, especially on the coattails of messing up as bad as we did. So, Hey, you know what? This channel is about honesty and transparency, and I will share the ups and the downs with y'all as we grow and evolve. Some other cool things are in the works right now, but despite this major setback and just like banging your head against the wall because of some really boneheaded stupid stuff and mistakes, um, but I can't really share the good things quite yet because I want our, our customer to launch it. I want to see that they've got a level of success, and I want to be able to iterate on, on what we're doing with them at least a little bit and uh, besides, I can't spoil the artwork that we're doing uh, before it, it goes live on their own website. So uh, look forward to some more great content. I just want to thank the 18 subscribers that we've got now. Uh, we were sitting at literally zero subscribers, zero views, um, and now just watching the, the YouTube studio jump to the point where I'm getting like 60 and 70 views every couple of days, uh, 18 subscribers. It's, it's kind of, it's heartening. It's absolutely heartening, you know, because you can go online. And you can buy a thousand fake subscribers and a hundred thousand YouTube views and a uh, you know a bunch of upvotes and everything like that, but it's fake. I want this to be 100% organic, and if we if we're doing something that people like, I want to know that, and I want to kind of evolve and shift with y'all. So thank you so much, the 18 of you guys who've, who've gotten involved. Um, thank you to everybody who commented on uh, the DTG video, and I look forward to to putting some more videos out for you guys. Bye.